in all the flight system part one to four, I have talked about the basic structure of the AFS and the flight guidance. We have seen the flight mode enunciator plays a key role in this and constantly informs us about the status of the aircraft in flight. Today, I want to continue with the flight envelope, FE. As we know, the Airbus is a flyby-wire aircraft. More about what this means and how it is implemented in the Airbus operation in the following. Okay, for an off your crossing, turn right. Foxtrot Delta Delta, Delta one, Zero, one, wind 270 one, degrees, two, one, six two, knots, two, runway two, zero, two, two, cleared for takeoff. Hello, my name is Frank Dreyer. Welcome back. Today we will continue with the auto flight system, but before I start, a few words to the expression fly-by-wire aircraft. Fly-by-wire or electronic aircraft control is a signal transmission technology for the operation of flight control of the aircraft. In contrast to classic aircraft handling in which the pilot flight controls movements with the control horn are directly transmitted to the control surfaces or rotors through steel cables, push rods or hydraulic systems, Flapper wire works different. There are sensors on the control elements, i.e. the control stick, the paddles, spoilers, and the speed brake system, which measure your inputs. These inputs are converted into electrical signals and sent to a computer, which analyzes the data and sends the results to the flight control surface actuators, where they are converted into movements of the control surfaces by servo motors or hydraulic actuators, which in turn are controlled by electronically, control or electronically managed electrical valves. The essential difference between flapper wire and server-assisted systems, such as your power steering in your car, is a complete mechanical decoupling of the control elements and servo motors or actuators. The control signals are transmitted purely electrically. An extension of the flapper wire concept is to run the control signals through a flight control computer before execution, which can check them for plausibility and monitor compliance with certain limit values so that the aircraft will not be overused or even structurally damaged. For example, due to excessive positive or negative g-forces, overspeed or an excessive angle of attack. The range the aircraft operates is named the flight envelope. The automatic monitoring and limiting of control commands is called flight envelope protection. The primary flight display includes the FMA in turn provides information about the status and the condition of the aircraft. You find detailed information about the FMA in my previous videos about the auto flight system. The fly-by-wire philosophy and its implemented flight envelope protection make the aircraft safer but also more complex to understand as it is equipped with several levels of automation used to perform specific tasks. The flight crew must determine the appropriate level of interaction with automated systems based on the flight situation, i.e. visibility, system malfunction, etc., and the task to be performed. To use the appropriate level of automation at all times, the flight crew shall determine and select the appropriate level of automation, which may include manual flight, understand the operational impact of the selected level of automation, and confirms that the aircraft is responding as expected. The golden rules for pilots, aviate, navigate, communicate, always in this order with an adequate task sharing. Use the appropriate level of automation at all times. Understand your FMA at all times and take action if things do not go as expected. Let's have a look at the dynamic lift. CL is the coefficient of lift. N is the load factor expressed in G. Quick reminder, G equals lift divided by weight. V stands for velocity, in our case, a calibrated airspeed. Depending on the shape of the airfoil, the highest point on the curve illustrates a specific calibrated airspeed where the coefficient of lift reaches its peak labeled CL max. This is as illustrated also dependent on a specific angle of attack. At this point, 
the aircraft is still able to maintain a load of 1G and this speed is named VS1G. Should we reduce the speed any further our, or increase the angle of attack, for example, flight at a load of 1G would be no longer possible and the consequence lift would collapse and the aircraft enters a traditional stall. For conventional aircraft, VS min is the reference stall speed and it corresponds to a sudden lift loss. This has been previously referred to as traditional stall. Airbus speed calculations do not use VS min. Instead, VS 1G is used as the new reference stall speed. Authorities have recognized the definition of the stall speed. VS min is now 0.94 multiplied by VS 1G. VS1G is not displayed in the cockpit. The value is calculated by the prims and is a function of aircraft weight and center of gravity, aircraft altitude, sled flaps position and landing gear position. VS1G is also calculated by the FMS for performance predictions and characteristic speeds presented on the MFD. As I mentioned, the PFD is a priority instrument to monitor the flight envelope and we need to understand the different indications. On the speed scale, the cyan blue triangle displays the speed which has been selected on the flight control unit. In case the speed is managed by the FMS, the triangle is magenta and on the AFS the speed window shows dashes. If you want to fly an optimized lift or drag speed during the climb, i.e. get the best climb performance, or plan to fly that speed which needs the lowest amount of thrust to maintain an altitude, you decide for the on Airbus aircraft called green dot speed, which is as well the drift down target speed in case of an engine failure. The green dot speed is displayed during flight as long as the flaps lever is at zero. The moment you activate the approach phase, green dot speed will become the target speed. It is as well computed by the prims as a function of aircraft altitude and aircraft gross weight. The FMS independently computes the green dot speed and displays it on the takeoff approach and go around panels of the FMS performance page. The yellow triangle with the yellow line is the calibrated airspeed. Now I would like to talk about speed indications which are presented via the amber and red bar next to the speed scale. They are part of the flight envelope protection system. The first named VLS, the lowest selectable speed. It doesn't mean that you can dial in a speed on the FCU which is lower as the present calculated VLS, but the prims continue to control the auto thrusts away that the actual speed will not drop below VLS even the presented Cyan triangle is set lower. The prims compute the VLS as a function of VS1G and the flight phase, takeoff, after takeoff, cruise, land or go around and the speed back position. During the takeoff phase, VLS is computed as the greater of either 1.15 times VS1G or the minimum of V2 divided by 1.05 or 1.05 times the minimum control speed for approach and landing VMCL. All about speeds in a different video. For all other flight phases, it is a greater of a value between 1.18 and 1.23 of VS1G or VMCL. The VLS provides a safety margin against stall of low speeds. It is displayed for the first time three seconds after takeoff and only exists in flight. The VLS shows on the PFD is computed by the prims but it is also independently computed by the FMS and this computation is displayed on the approach panel of the FMS performance page. Let's have a look on the speed scale and see what happens the moment we select the flap lever to config one. The green dot speed disappears and a green S appears. In case config one plus F would be your takeoff configuration, the flap lever is set to position one on the ground S will be initially not displayed, but will appear three seconds after liftoff. After takeoff or in case of a go around, S symbolizes the minimum recommended speed 
for slats retraction. The safety margin from S speed is 1.21 times VS1 G4 configuration zero. During approach and in managed speed, S becomes the target speed. Here in the presentation, speed is selected as we can see by the Cyan triangle. The moment the flap sleever is moved to config two or config three, S disappears and F appears on the speed scale. During takeoff or go round, F symbolizes the minimum recommended speed to retract the flaps from config two or config three to config one plus F. The margin of F is the greater of 1.18 times VS1G for config one plus F and VMCL plus five knots. As soon as you are in the approach in config two or config three and speed is managed, F will be the target speed. Let's take a look at the whole thing in practice. We are flying with a selected speed of 200 knots just above green dot speed. Now I select config one, we see green dot disappears as appears. VLS and V alpha prod reduce as the wing surface increases. I reduce the speed further and select config two. Again, VLS and V alpha prod reduce in conjunction with the angle of attack reduction. I reduce the speed further and select config three. Now config full, the F disappears, new target speed is our case will become the selected 152 knots. What happens if I select a speed below VLS, here 120 knots? Well, the speed initially decreases, but will stabilize at VLS. The next we are looking at is V alpha prod. It stays for a speed related to an angle of attack limit. Drops the speed below this value, the zone in angle of attack protection becomes active and as a consequence, alpha floor will be activated. The fly-by-wire system of the aircraft has a redundant structure of three operating modes, so named control laws. Normal law, alternate law, and direct law. As long as all the systems are operative, the normal law is active. Operating in normal law, the aircraft has certain protection modes. I will discuss them in detail in a separate video. The V alpha prod is displayed from three seconds after liftoff to touchdown. The never exceed speed, i.e. angle of attack maximum is called V alpha max and is presented by the top of the red bar displayed on the PFT speed scale. Let's come back to the coefficient of lift angle of attack graph for a moment. We remember VS1G stays for the 1G stalling speed. At this specific speed and angle of attack, the aircraft can just maintain 1G, the CL max is reached. Where can we expect V alpha prod? Well, we see there is a certain buffer which is continuously computed considering a lot of input values like aircraft weight, center of gravity, calibrated airspeed, G load, altitude, outside air temperature, and aircraft configuration to name a few. 
In case the calibrated airspeed decreases further and the AOA increases, alpha floor will be activated by demanding full available thrust. The never exceed speed V alpha max comes next. As I mentioned already, I will explain the different protection modes in a separate video. All speed values we have talked about are computed by the PRIMS and displayed on the PFD. The FMCs are calculating the speed values as well and compare its calculation with the PRIMS throughout. This approach provides redundancy, but the system architecture still gives the flight crew the authority to change values, i.e. like overwriting the approach speed on the approach panel of the MFD performance page. We started with the flight envelope and its operating speeds today. Flight envelope protection is a quite interesting topic as well and I will cover it in one of my next videos. It is an excellent invention and an exclusive advantage of fly-by-wire systems as they reduce workload and make flying safer and more efficient, but they never replace the golden rules for pilots. Aviate, which means fly the aircraft, monitor pitch, bank, altitude, speed, thrust setting, heading and side slip to achieve and maintain your targets. Navigate, know where you are, know where you should be, know where you should go and know where the obstacles, the terrain and the weather are. And last but not least, communicate in a calm, coordinated and effective way with your colleague, air traffic control, the cabin crew, the ground crew. That shall be enough for today. In case you have questions or comments, please use the given option below. I appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a great day.